Hello, my name is Melissa Daniels and I have strabismus. Strabismus is when your eyes are not pointing or working together, kind of like this. Today, I am going to take you through some basic eye calisthenics that are so important, especially for those of us that have strabismus. This is something that anybody can do, whether you are getting ready for surgery or this is after surgery or you're in vision therapy, I'm looking into that. These are really important because usually we really suffer in this area of basic eye movements and that affects everything else. This is really foundational, super important. Before we jump into that, I want to make sure that you know that you can get help from me over at learn.strabismussolutions.com. So be sure to check that out. You can sign up for one of my courses. There is so much over there that can really help you through this journey. I've been through it. I've experienced it. I'm still experiencing it as you're about to see in these videos. And I am trying to create different resources that are going to help other people in the same exact situation as me. Because I know that when I started my journey, there was nothing out there. And I'm trying to make it so that it's not as difficult for those that are coming after me. Why are eye calisthenics so important? You maybe have never even heard of that term and that's because I think I made it up. I don't think I've ever heard anyone refer to what I'm about to talk about as eye calisthenics, but that's really what it is. This involves pursuits, which is when you're following a target, saccades where you're bouncing your eyes from one place to another and fixation where you're holding your gaze in, in the same place. It also involves peripheral in my mind and that is just as important as those other skills and the combination of all these things together that's what I'm calling eye calisthenics can you move your eyes this is so important for three reasons one the flexibility of the actual physical muscles to move in all directions without pain if you have an eyeball that's sitting out here when you try to move that eyeball in even, you know, you're wearing a patch and you're, you're focusing the eye, trying to get it to move in, that might actually hurt to move it in. For me, um, I've got this eyeball that likes to go up and in. So when I try to move it out and down, ugh, it, it, there is like some like, it's hurting. It's like when I try to touch my toes, right? Like it's not even possible for me to touch my toes, but it, I can get there, right? So it's that, that's part of it, the flexibility to move in all directions. What's first? Second is just to have smooth and precise movements with your eyes, that your eyes are just like a well-oiled machine, right? Um, if I can only use one leg, the perfect example of this is actually like if you were to break a leg or break an arm, if you've, or if you've had an arm in a cast ever and you've experienced this, you take it off and it's like, it's kind of like this jerky, shaky movement. It's not this like beautiful, smooth movement, right? And so in order to get those arms coordinating together, you gotta get that smooth movement in both arms. And so that's part of it, is just like, can you move those eyeballs smoothly, accurately? Can you go from one to the other and it's just like very accurate or is it jumpy, right? So that's part of eye calisthenics. We don't want jumpy. We don't want inaccurate eye movements. We want it to be accurate, flexible, all the good things. And last is awareness of what it feels like to move your eyes. As you're doing these exercises, you're going to start feeling like, oh my gosh, my eye is kind of bouncing or, um, you know, I'm, I'm not able to move that far or, oh, is that what it feels like to move my, my lazy eye out? You, you might not even know what that feels like. And so it's building awareness so that you can actually feel your eyes moving. That can help you know when your eye is turning out or up or in or down all of those things, doing these types of eye exercises is gonna give you awareness to know when those things are happening. Many people with strabismus that are in vision therapy wanna skip over this stuff. It's very boring, right? Like really, like looking at a pen for five minutes, like that can just feel grueling. And I am with you and guilty of just jumping to VR or the red and green glasses or the more exciting exercises that just look cooler but it's all at the expense of the, that strong foundation. And I've been making a lot of content about this subject lately because I'm realizing this is a missing piece that I haven't spent enough time on. And so I wanna really highlight the importance 
of the foundation. I am recommitting myself to doing eye stretches every single day because I created a video showing you about 15 to 20 different variations of different types of eye calisthenics and my eyes are pretty much a disaster. You're going to see my vertical strabismus so clearly. So enjoy that and let it be a reminder to you that it's much better to be consistent and work a little bit every day than to do nothing for a few weeks and then spend an hour and a half doing eye exercises that are way, way, way difficult, which is exactly what I did this weekend. <laughs> and this is the result of that. First, we are going to take a look at pursuits and fixation. So this means that you're following a moving target and trying to keep your eye focused. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can go simple left to right. I call this the X axis because I'm a math teacher and I can't help myself. Just going back and forth, you can see that I am moving the pen and my eyes are following it. Next, you could do the Y axis, which is straight up and down. Um, my eyes are trying to stay with the pen the whole time. Every now and then you'll see my eyes jump away from the target, but this is the basic idea. Um, another one is the Z axis. You don't wanna forget the Z axis. That's going from you to, you know, straight in front of you. We don't want to work just straight forward and back motion though we want to do diagonals so that's where we combine so this is where my strabismus gets to shine so keep an eye out for that eye turn we're going to work diagonals now so this is the x y axis combined i'm just doing straight diagonals in front of my face next i'm combining the x and the z axis so i'm going side to side and in and out kind of at the same time again diagonal motions are gonna be more applicable to what you're doing in real life. And can you do that? Keep your eyes focused on the tip of the pen or whatever fixation object you're using. Can you stay on it that entire time? All right, next we're gonna work the Y, Z. That means I'm coming in and out, but I'm changing how high the pen is at the same time. So I'm, again, I'm working diagonals. These are more like what we do in real life. Here we're combining all three and just kind of doing some random diagonals. You can also add circles, which are really challenging for me today. Make sure if you do circles, you go both clockwise and counterclockwise. And of course you can combine all of these into something random. If you've got a friend that's willing to move the pen around for you, even better because then you don't know what to expect and it's just a challenge. Can you keep your eyes on that target the whole time? You can try this at different speeds. You can try this with moving quickly, which is way more advanced, or you can do it moving slowly. Now that you can see the basic eye directions that you can go, right? All directions, diagonals, forward, back, all the things. Now there's a lot of different ways you can actually do those motions. So here are some examples of that. One, you can do it with your eyes closed. So you are still moving the pen and you're trying to follow, ooh, there's a creepy eyeball for you. You're trying to follow that pen as you're going, but you can't actually see it. Once you master doing it with a pen with your eyes closed, you can actually do this with no pen with your eyes closed. Can you move left, right, up, down, diagonals, z-axis, circles, all the things with your eyes closed. This is where you're really gonna gain that awareness of what your eyes are doing. You can also do this with one at eye at a time, especially if you have something like me where you're working those diagonals and your eyes are just going haywire and not staying together. Um, Sometimes I'll use the patch to isolate one eye and really get the feeling with one eye, then the other eye and try them both together. So you can do each of those things with the patch on. You can also change the distance. So you can do it super close to your eye or further away. These close eye movements are going to definitely help stretch it out if, if you are having a difficult time moving your eye in a certain direction because of the strabismus, doing it up close can sometimes help you get a better feel for that. 
Next, let's look at some saccades. So saccades are when your eyes are jumping from one target to another. And I know I've talked a lot about this on my channel, but the idea is can you keep one pen in your peripheral and then jump straight to it. That's the key is having your peripheral open to help make an accurate saccade. So you can see that I am doing some of those same patterns with the different diagonals and doing that, but I, instead of moving my eyes smoothly, I'm jumping from target to target. Now, throughout all of these exercises, one thing that I haven't talked about is that I am opening my peripheral. So yes, I'm trying to move my eyes smoothly. I'm trying to jump, all of those things. And at the same time, I'm seeing how much of my world can I still see? Can I see the floor and the ceiling at the same time? Can I see the walls? Can I see the, the clouds behind me out the window? That is all part of eye calisthenics. How accurate can you be with your eye movements and opening your peripheral at the same time? It's definitely not easy. My eyes are watering like crazy and I am feeling a little bit of a headache come on because I haven't worked my eyes out that hard in a while. This is a great way to build some basic eye skills. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level and start getting that 3D vision in the stereo and all the good things, that is gonna require in-office vision therapy, which is totally worth it. So if you wanna learn more about that, go over to strabismussolutions.com slash findvt. You put in your information about where you live and I will send you personal recommendations for offices that would be good for you. Whatever you decide to do, just make sure you don't get stuck in indecision. Keep moving forward and know that there are so many options for success. You just gotta find the ones that work for you. We'll see you in the next video.